so he can give us a good overview of what this bill's all about. Okay. And if there are any uh, flashpoints we should be aware of based on your experience. Okay. <laughs> None of those, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Does everyone have a copy of the bill? Yeah. So you can follow along. So I'm going to use my notes if I can. By the way, for the record, uh, Brian Collimore representing the Rutland Senate District. Uh, I'm going to uh, use my uh, floor notes, if you can, if you will, to uh, walk through the bill. <coughs> this is an act relating to the mitigation of systemic racism. Section one expresses the legislative intent. Section two amends the section of law setting forth the powers and duties of the governor's cabinet, which will include a directive that the cabinet work collaboratively with and provide relevant records to the chief civil rights officer, which is a new position created in this bill. Section three adds a new chapter to title three regarding that position. Section 5001 creates an independent position of chief civil rights officer to identify and work to eradicate systemic racism within state government. It gives the officer the powers and duties of the governor's cabinet while keeping the position independent of the cabinet. And it houses the officer within the agency of administration. Section 5002 establishes the panel, the Civil Rights Advisory Panel, within the agency of administration. It consists of five members, none of which shall be legislators appointed by the various uh, appointing bodies here, the Senate Committee on Committees, the Speaker of the House, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, the Governor, and the Human Rights Commission. Subdivision 2 specifies that the member shall have experience working to implement racial justice reform and that they represent geographically diverse areas of the state and that at least three members shall be persons of color. Subdivision 3 provides that the member shall serve staggered three-year terms specifies that of the first members appointed, one member shall serve a one-year term, one member a term of two years and up to five years so that the term of one member expires in each ensuing year. That was very complicated language at the beginning. I introduced an amendment which clears that up and I'll get to that a little bit later. The responsibilities of the panel are set forth in subsection C and those are to appoint the officer work with the officer to implement reforms, oversee and advise the officer, report to both the, it should be Senate and Health, uh, or uh, House Government Operations Committees annually, and only the panel has the authority to remove the officer. The panel is entitled to, entitled to per diem compensation. <laughs> Moving on, section 5003 sets forth the duties of the chief civil rights officer which are to work with state government to combat systemic racial disparities and measure progress toward fair and impartial governance. These duties are to include oversight of a comprehensive organizational review to identify systemic racism throughout state government, management and oversight of the statewide collection of race-based data. Subsection C specifies that the officer shall work with the agencies and departments and the CPO, the chief performance officer, to develop performance targets and measures for all three branches of government and directs the inclusion of these measures in the officer's annual report to the legislature. Subsection D <coughs> provides that the officer shall, in consultation with the Department of Human Resources and the various agencies and departments, develop and conduct trainings for the agencies and departments. Subsection E grants subpoena power to the chief to require the production of data and to compel testimony. The power granted to the officer is similar to the subpoena power of the Human Rights Commission. Section four is the authorization for the position. Section five, the appropriation. That has uh, been replaced by the Appropriations Committee Amendment, and we'll get to that a little bit later. And section six creates a timeline of events for the rollout of both the position and its work. The panel is to be appointed by September 1st of this year. The officer job description posted by November 1st. The panel appointing the officer by January 1st of 2019. The officer updates the government operations committees on how to achieve the comprehensive organizational review, including potential private and public sources of funding for it by April 1st of next year. And 
and the bill takes effect on passage. Now, one of the uh, two amendments that I offered on the floor was to retitle the bill to an act relating to the mitigation of systemic racism, and that has been accomplished. That is, in fact, the name of the act. <coughs> and then I mentioned the appointments to the uh, panel. So the first one will change the subdivision setting out the staggered terms to specify which length of appointment is made by each appointing authority. So the Human Resources Commission appoints a one-year term. The governor appoints the two-year term. The Speaker of the House appoints the three-year term. The Committee on Committees appoints the four-year term. And the Chief Justice appoints the five-year term. And they will be staggered from that point on. Uh, the second repeals the officer position and the panel in five years on June 30th, 2024. And we heard from a very long list of uh, witnesses. I can go through them if you'd like. Uh, it, Brian, that's not necessary since we have basically the same, okay. not, not down to the exact number, but virtually the same line that you folks have. Yeah, I will say on at least more than one occasion, we had to adjourn from our committee room to uh, room 10 to be able to have enough people in the room to be comfortable. Yeah. Are you set for some questions? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, Senator Conor, uh, thank you for the overview. Uh, this was helpful. Um, can you, and I don't follow the Senate actions real closely, um, but there was a news article about uh, some floor amendment on this, I think related to the makeup of the panel. Can you give us any, which I guess ultimately failed, but can you give us any background sure. on that? Yep. Uh, Senator Brock introduced or, or offered that amendment. He and I had talked uh, when he knew I was going to be the reporter of the bill. He indicated that he was going to offer an amendment. This is the amendment that he offered, which would replace subsection or subdivision two in that 5002 section. <coughs> uh, in order to promote vigorous debate and a full exploration of the issues, panel membership shall reflect the variety of background, skills, experiences, and perspectives, be racially diverse, and represent geographically diverse areas of the state, and all members appointed shall be made in a non-discriminatory manner. That was the amendment that was offered by Senator Brock on the floor. Um, I don't want to speak for him, but I think he did mention on the floor that he felt that in order to put persons of color in the bill was, in fact, race, racism, and he felt very strongly about that. And uh, the vote, as I recall, on the amendment was 18 to 12 not to accept his amendment. So um, I'm trying to understand how this would work in practice it's in the bill um, it says at least three members shall be persons of color and then you have a was a five member panel correct uh, and one's appointed by the governor one's appointed by the human rights commission let so who gets to choose who's who I mean I guess if um, I, I mean in the, if they're making these uh, appointments independently, how do you end up with the the balance or the criteria here being fulfilled? That's an excellent question. Um, I think the feeling was that there would be some collaboration and some talk with the appointing bodies before they would appoint anybody so that that, that fact would be accomplished. Okay. And then the panel would meet and decide who the officer was going to be. Okay. Um, my next question relates to um, the director or officer, whatever yep. it's called, is that a full-time or a part-time position? No, it, it intended for uh, six months worth of funding, and I didn't get to that, but the Appropriations uh, Committee in the Senate did appropriate $75,000 for the position of the chief civil rights officer and to take care of the per diems for the panel. So it was intended to be a six-month appointment. And uh, that was it. Uh, okay, so that raises the next question. So six months meaning like just because it's only going to be half a fiscal year? Correct. Um, so the, the appro annual appropriation is really twice this? 
Well, that's not addressed in the bill at all. The only money that's been appropriated is the seventy-five. No, I, I understand, $75. but uh, if we're going to set all this up, uh, unless it's only going to last six months, next year we have to appropriate. Correct. Twice that amount. Correct. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that that's understood. Yep. Um, and the other um, question I have, and I and I will quiet after be quiet after that, is it seems some of this has to do with um, uh, issues that we might normally turn to the Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember an incident where a small business didn't use uh, the restroom, public restroom, to be used by a, a customer of color, and the Human Rights Commission got involved and, and resolved that issue somehow. Um, did your committee look at whether or not the Human Rights Commission would be the right place and maybe somehow could be beefed up to serve this purpose um, as opposed to look, looking to a brand new independent commission? Um, and I'm not really sure in the end who, who it reports to. The initial bill was drafted by Senator Ingram from Chittenden County. So this is a, the end result is different from what was originally intended or originally proposed. Okay. But the Senate Government Operations Committee, I think, was pretty clear in its intent that we, while we appreciate the work of the Human Rights Commission, we wanted to focus strictly on systemic racial uh, problems in the state. So we felt that it should get an independent, full-time panel and officer working on that. So that was the intent right from the get-go, was to not use existing bodies but to appoint and to fund a separate group if you will that would that would concern themselves only with that one issue okay. Thank you. all set Jeff. Mm -hmm. all set. Rob. Um, I have a couple of sure. one um, <clears throat> how do you define a person of color <laughs> that was a very uh, Interesting discussion in the committee room. We don't, we didn't come up with, with a, a, a definition. Mm -hmm. and, and why is color the primary determining factor? Why wouldn't it be um, all races or, or religions? I mean, like arguably, my, my kids are Jewish. Why would, why aren't we talking about different nationalities as opposed to just color? Well, again, the intent of the committee was to address racism. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, based on race. And, and we felt strongly, I think, because the committee vote was 5 zero, 0 that that should be a part of the discussion. That in many ways, and this was, there was a lot of floor debate on this topic too, uh, Rob. <coughs> um, you sort of can only understand what someone else is feeling if that person is, is talking to you about their experiences. Mm -hmm. I use the example, I don't know if I did it on the floor, but I think I could do it here. In education, for instance, in tests that are, that are you know, teacher will come up with a test and everybody. What we, as whites, see as a perf perfectly legitimate question may not be viewed the same way by someone of color, so that we don't see the same lens that they do. And we felt that at least to have a majority of the panel uh, on that was important. Thank you. Sure. Um, we've got John and then Jessica. Uh, so, uh, Senator, I was looking at the duties of the civil rights officer. Mm -hmm. And um, A1 says, you know, oversee a comprehensive organizational review to identify systematic racism in each of the three branches of state government, but then it says, which may be completed by a consultant or outside vendor. Yes. There's no money for that in this bill. Correct. Right. We did ask Joint Fiscal to come up with a, a fiscal note for us on that. And okay. we had uh, estimates somewhere between, I want to say $200,000 to $450,000, depending on how long and how deep a dive you wanted folks to do. So. But the costs were not addressed in the bill, no. That was something for a future legislature to be concerned with. The only funding, the only money attached to this is the 75000 Okay. 
Thank you. Um, Jessica. Um, just to follow up a little bit on Rob's question, I was curious about whether or not you heard from anyone on the um, from the Abenakis and there is a chief of the Nelhegan band that is in lives in my district and yep. is curious and so I'm kind of because I would assume that that would fit under this, no? Again, we had a very interesting discussion on the floor about that. <coughs> to my knowledge, we did not hear from anyone from that group. So can you tell me a little bit about the interesting discussion on the floor? Well, again, if you try to, <laughs> in 25 words or less, describe what a person of color is, you probably, if you talk to three people, you get three different answers. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Senator Pearson, I think, made the point that it's everyone that's not white. And so then you begin to look at Middle Eastern folks and mm -hmm. are they persons of color or not? Asian people, are they persons of... And the answer is we can't come up with the perfect definition. And if you look at the federal government and how they've... Because I know that there is a whole section around Native Americans and, um, and so they have defined it somewhat as well as um, I would the different population or the different nationalities have been defined. So I wonder if that could be helpful. But. We didn't take a look at anything like that. OK. Thank you. The, the vote, by the way, on the floor was a voice vote, as I recall. We didn't take a roll call on that. But we did take a roll call on Senator Brock's amendment. But when it was defeated, we moved immediately to a voice vote. And there were some no's. I mean, I can't say there wasn't, but we did move on. Other questions for the senator from the committee members? Warren. Just a, a small one on the uh, <coughs> appointment of members. Mm -hmm. uh, the term shall be three years except, and then we have a one-year appointment, two-year appointment. And as, ter as terms of currently serving members expire, appointments of successors shall be in accord with the provisions of this subsection. And I'm just wondering which, which provision. I, I, I would hope that their reappointment would be for three years, even if they had originally been appointed only for one or two. Yeah, four, it's four or five, for that matter. Uh, at some point, it gets self-selecting as people step down. You, you know, these staggered terms are necessary when you begin, but, right. but not in the future. Correct. And I think the amendment that we passed, which changes the way that the appointments are made, took care of that. Okay. 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 And Senator, what was the uh, title of this bill originally? It's now an act relating to the mitigation of systemic racism. Uh, let me go back. I could, I could look it up. There was oversight in the original the Systemic Racism Mitigation Oversight and Equity Review Board. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, yes, How often do they propose a meeting? I don't know if that's addressed or not. There was a question earlier, and part of the answer was full time. And I, you're not going to get many volunteers for this. Go full time if they only get per diem. Uh, that's the uh, chief. Officer. That's the uh, chief officer. directory itself. Yeah, yeah, but uh, there was a mention in sort of passing through about full that's time. I'm looking at the bill to see if I can get to a, an answer. I don't think. I don't believe there's anything in there that addresses that. I think it's silent on that. I don't see anything. There probably should be someone that you're going to burn through your podium. Yes. Real fast. Just a couple more questions for the Senator, and then we have to ask for other folks. Uh, Jessica? Just Quickly, so it looks like the head of the board, the chief uh, res, um, civil head, yeah, the civil head, I can't find the name. Chief civil rights, civil rights officer. officer reports to the board. <coughs> does, he, does that person report to anyone? 
inside of government. So the governor or a, nothing. I just want to be sure I'm not missing it. <clears throat> there is a report that is that goes to both of the uh, government operations committees annually, I believe. Yeah, I saw that. Term. Um, so, so, how many positions are there in state government that um, aren't controlled by the governor or the administration and can't be fired <coughs> by the administration? Yeah. That was another interesting point. Um, I'm not sure there are. We, we, we did take testimony from folks that uh, in order to set this up as an independent panel and position for the officer, um, it was important that it not have to sort of have shoestrings tied to uh, any of the branches. So it is worded that way that only the panel may remove the officer. And it became a matter of discussion in the, in the committee and also on the floor. Okay. Um, and just one other question with mm -hmm. respect to the subpoena powers. Yes. What if there has to be subpoena enforcement? I mean, it doesn't really detail what happens if, say, a, a witness refuses to comply with a subpoena or an agency refuses to produce documents pursuant to a subpoena? Yeah, the, the subpoena power was an administrative one that is similar to what we have with the Human Rights Commission. And I okay. believe that if, if, it, if that happened, the Attorney General could get involved. OK. Thank you. Marsha? I might have an answer for John's question. Um, it used to be that it was uh, the um, Commissioner of Education and Liquor Control did not were not uh, direct appointees of the governor. Um, I think that's changed for education, but Liquor Control still reports to their board. But my question for the senator is, when you took testimony, can you give me an idea of how pervasive this issue is in state government? <coughs> well, I think that's the the answer to which we hope this panel and the officer will come up with. Um, we did take testimony from both the Agency of Transportation and Department of Public Service uh, through the state police that they have already begun work on this mm -hmm. and have made substantial progress, I would phrase it. Uh, but there may be other areas of, of state government that we just haven't looked at yet. So that was the point of, of having the panel really, and the officer. Uh, we'll yeah. to, to look at this carefully. Thank you. As a follow-up to that, are there benchmarks, even if they're fuzzy, from which further progress can be measured? Well, I think if, if the panel and the officer work with the chief performance officer, uh, that person is a big champion of results-based accountability, as we well know <laughs> from serving on other committees. Um, so there will be uh, outcomes and indicators, I'm sure, that uh, they'll be able to work through. I, oh, oh, sorry, I, I, no, I began my, 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 how, my uh, Senate floor report by saying that I think we all can point to instances of bad behavior by people who are acting in a racist manner. But what we don't understand sometimes is the systemic situation that we may not even be aware of. That's why I used the example of the education and the, and the testing and the particular question that for all of us might seem fairly innocuous, but it may not be that way underneath all these layers. And I think that was the intent of this panel and the, and the officer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Um, first, as a follow-up to um, Marsha's uh, comment about the liquor and education, I think she's exactly correct. However, in both cases, those boards are totally appointed by the governor. So there's, one could argue there's certainly an indirect line mm -hmm. to the governor uh, in both cases. 
Um, but um, getting back to who this commission reports to, um, the Attorney General's office, I believe, has a civil rights division. Um, was there any conversation with the Attorney General's office as to whether this was the right home for the commission or board? I know that we had testimony from, from that office. Um, I'm trying to remember who came in. I don't see it quickly here. But yes, we did have we did have discussions at least about that. But again, the intent was to make it as independent as possible. It kind of, kind of just sets out there to kind of do its own work. And that's a matter of concern, I know. And uh, Senator, I'm going to take the last question because your bell is ringing. Um, I, I feel the tug out the room there. I have a feeling today's floor session may not be quite as oh, long okay. or contentious. Uh, oh, as yes, Friday. Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, was there any discussion in committee as to what happens, or how it's dealt with, if, if there's disagreement. In the bill, it talks about three, three members of the panel. Uh, where is that language? I lost it. Um, uh, yes, at least three members shall be persons of color. Mm -hmm. If there are individuals, even one individual, who believes that uh, there are not at least three members that are persons of color who have been appointed. In other words, if it gets to that question as to how to define, what happens? Was there any discussion about that? Well, I think with the odd number of members of the panel, you, you would just vote and... So from within the panel itself, they would refute, say, that a, a person X, Y, or Z was not to be seated as part of the panel? Well, no, I think that, I, I jumped ahead, it would be the step before that the appointing bodies would be getting together and deciding who was going to be on the panel. Yes. So at that point, they would have to come to a con conclusion but, but if there were a member of the public, say, mm -hmm. who took a look at the final, uh, finally constituted uh, panel and said, hey, they don't meet the definition. There's not three persons of color. Was there any discussion about that? If there was a, the interpretation from outside of the uh, nominating entities and all, because there, you mentioned to us there was all this discussion mm -hmm. as to how to define, is a person from Asia a person of color? Is a person, you know, you were running through that yes. before. Uh, no, we did not discuss that. Okay. We left it up to the appointing bodies to reach to consensus and appoint people that they felt were. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, thank you, Senator. I. I would head downstairs as need be. Thank you so much for, uh, for your flexibility. The Appreciate senator was time. asking if we couldn't start at 8.30. I explained that we had people driving in. Nine o'clock is our Tuesday morning yeah. time. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. And may we call upon you if we have some more questions? For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Let's see, we have with us, we have with us our colleagues. Um, Dion, did I see Deanna come in? Or did she? Um, she, 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 left. she She has chemical sensitivity and- uh, Oh, we have stuff in here? Uh, there might have been. Oh dear. Because I think that's why she left. Okay. You know, it, it, it happens in our committee room. Okay. Well, Coach, would you care to share with us any thoughts you have with regard to this bill? I want to take advantage of members who can be here when they stop by, because mere presence shows an interest, it seems to me, in the bill, before you get called back to <laughs> where you would normally be at this moment. Well, uh, I think we're going to go right to the floor. Oh, okay. Uh. For the record, please. Representative Kevin Coach Christie from Hartford. So in, in following um, 
the Senate Bill S-281. Um, there was a bill that was in the House, and it is now on your wall, uh, H-868, uh, mitigating systemic uh, racism uh, in Vermont. And that was a parallel bill to Senator Ingram's bill. And the <coughs> outcome of the work in the Senate is what we have before us. Um, our bill, as, as you know, is still on uh, the House version, is still on the wall. Um, it's a much broader context. Uh, the House version uh, of the bill, uh, it not only looks at uh, state government, but it looks at racism across the, the spectrum. Uh, it goes back into uh, uh, policing the criminal justice uh, portion of the system as well. Uh, and as a result of the work in the Senate, and especially uh, in GovOps, uh, it was felt that initially to get a very deep dive done at the administrative level throughout state government seemed to be a very appropriate way uh, to go. Uh, and when you look at the structure, uh, it's more like uh, an Office of Equal Employment Opportunity. And if you look at those offices across uh, organizations, uh, the, the idea is, is that they're autonomous. Uh, they have a responsibility to look at where uh, inequities might be, you know, across that particular organization and delve into that uh, research and work and come up with uh, uh, solutions, uh, possible trainings, as have been noted uh, in the Senate bill. So taking that all into uh, uh, you know, into effect, I, I noticed the questions about the uh, Human Rights Commission uh, being used uh, as the vehicle uh, to mitigate some of these questions. And I think that from a legal perspective, what's happened is the Human Rights Commission deals with the state government side of things, and then the AG's office, you know, would deal with those external uh, components. Um, being that the Human Rights Commission has a charge to um, protect all protected classes, uh, we'll find that, um, and, I, and I think that when we look at um, how things have worked over time, uh, the Human Rights Commission would end up uh, dealing with those issues in state government uh, because it felt that there needed to be a separation, you know, from the AG's office uh, in some cases um, that showed a true separation. You know, especially around that subpoena uh, component uh, and being able to uh, mitigate you know, those cases. Um, I also heard the question uh, that, you know, why didn't the Senate look at uh, possibly merging uh, the responsibilities, you know, into uh, the commission? Well, after 30 years, uh, this is the Commission's 30th anniversary. Uh, its composition has not changed. <coughs> the work of the Commission has drastically changed over the last 30 years, and there has been no support given uh, to the Commission. So to give it, you know, an additional charge, you know, without, uh, you know, authorizing additional uh, resources uh, would not be an appropriate thing to do. You know, I know we do things in state government sometimes that 
<laughs> aren't necessarily uh, what we'd like to say uh, are proactive, but that would have been bordering on ludicrous. Um, so, and, and that's not just a, a judgment call. You know, I mean, you know, think about every bill that we've seen that talks about um, responsibilities. Um, most recently, the sexual harassment bill that we passed out of the House. Uh, shared responsibility uh, of the protected classes was given to the AG's office and the Human Rights Commission. The AG's office added staff. The commission has not. So, you know, I mean, it's, um, there's only so much you can do with what you have. Um, so, anyways, that, that, that's that perspective of it. Yes? Take a couple of questions? Sure. Committee, questions for coach? Uh, one, I guess going back, Coach, to your, <clears throat> excuse me, about the Human Rights Commission, are, are there no people of color on that? Is that what you were? Uh, I, I was just appointed by the governor as the commission's new chair. Okay, so. When now, said, now, now there is. Now, okay. <laughs> so, but in the last 30 years, have you been? Uh, no. Okay, that's too fair. Could you give me a couple of examples of, of what systemic racism looks like, say, within state government, as far as from, maybe it would be more probably your personal observation, or? <clears throat> well, I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you an example of uh, just weird situations, you know, for lack of a better adjective, okay. Um, a few days ago, I was in the motel, and uh, went to breakfast, and I was the last person, uh, you know, in the little breakfast room up there. And this woman comes up and says, do you work here? And <laughs> I went on to say, uh, why do you ask? <laughs> and she couldn't, you know, I mean, then she started blah, 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 blah. You know. And I, I said, uh, why do you ask if I work here? And, and she couldn't really answer you know, the question. So basically I said to her, I said, you know, think about it. If you had said that to someone else, we might have had a whole different outcome to this conversation. I don't work here. And your assumption uh, was inaccurate. Um, when you look at situations and, you know, the number of times that people respond differently to you, you know, as a person of color, uh, depending on how I dress, if I'm in my work clothes, today's work clothes, um, sir, I mean, people are, you know, go out of their way to do that. When I'm more casually dressed, the responses change, and I, I really dress like I'm working on my car unless I go to the car place. But there's a whole different range of reactions that people have, and 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 that's fact. You know, it's part of my reality. You know, as being a person of color, I've been in Vermont since 1973, and if I shared some of those. <coughs> It's changed since the early 70s. Um, you know, back, back in the 70s, um, besides epitaphs used, uh, and it, it was hard to tell where it was coming from. You know, was it uh, mean-spirited? Uh, was it just total ignorance? Um, or were they trying to, you know, see my reaction? But, but that has changed over time. Some of it's uh, become more um, uh, subversive. And, and you, can, you, you can sense when, when there's a, a different tone uh, that's being used. Uh, uh, simple things like people not wanting to 
put your change directly in your hand. You know, like throw it on the counter. You know, things like that. You know, I, I, I mean, you, you know, when you, when you, <laughs> living it is, is, a, is a whole other uh, ball game, uh, so to speak. And, and it's real. Um, talking to people on the phone uh, is, uh, because of my, um, where I went to school and the fact that, you know, I went to a parochial school, uh, my, um, my speaking patterns aren't necessarily, uh, let's say, neighborhood patterns. So talking to someone on the phone, I'll get a certain response. Once I meet that person, a whole different response. Um, so it, it's fascinating in a way. You know, I mean, it's a pain in the butt sometimes, but uh, it, it is what it is. Um, people are really trying to get a better understanding, I think. You know, people with open minds, people that feel that, <coughs> you know, like Senator Colomore said, um, you know it when you see it, and then it's pretty, it's pretty apparent. Um, it's, it, it's not, you know, it's not easy sometimes. You know, sometimes you want to just say, you know, uh, lose it, and you can understand why people do. <laughs> uh, you know, I choose not to uh, because I don't like that side of my uh, personality when I lose it. Um, you know, so I keep it under control. Uh, but you know, I, I do know folks who don't, uh, and that creates a pretty uh, hairy situation, so to speak. Uh, but that's the reality, you know, and that's what we're looking for. Now, when, as a trainer, because I have helped uh, school districts especially, you know, work through issues of um, uh, bias, let's say just general, you know, bias. And when people start to understand that we all have biases, uh, it might be a bias for uh, a person with a handicap, or you know, it could be any number, you know, of different uh, uh, situations. But as we start to learn about ourselves and about how we can sometimes um, misdirect, you know, our feelings about certain things, that's when the door really opens, you know, to change. Uh, and that's what this training piece, you know, we're talking about. That's what the commission, the, you know, the Human Rights Commission over time, you know, has, has found itself in that role uh, throughout the state, you know, be it with schools, be it with businesses. Um, <coughs> I, I remember a case uh, when I was on the commission before uh, and it was one of the last cases we had where uh, two people uh, went into a Denny's uh, and one was a person of color and another one was his salesperson partner. And so they were seated in a closed section of the restaurant. And I, I remember that case like it, was, like it was yesterday. Needless to say, Denny's, even with the uh, you know, the litigation power that they had lost the case. Uh, but it was clearly a case of discrimination. Uh, you know, other cases where uh, a, a interracial couple, you know, at the Sheridan uh, in Burlington, you know, went up and the husband made the reservation. The wife came in later to get her um, uh, key, room key, and they wouldn't give her the key. Um, it, you know, it's stupid stuff, I, for lack of a better way to put it. You know, those kinds of things still happen, still go on. And I think that uh, we have an opportunity with our work, you know, legislatively, 
um, to try to help mitigate, you know, some of these problems. And that's what it's about. You know, I, I think the better uh, we understand each other, the better we understand what these problems are, um, the easier it is for us to do our work collectively. You know, and that's what it's about. You know, and, and, and you couldn't ask for a better time to be doing this bill, you know, than, you know, the uh, anniversary of Dr. King's death. Because he got it done, you know, and um, you know, th th that's a tribute, you know, I think for all of us. So I guess that's all I got to share at this point. Thank you. Uh, Jessica? I'm, yes. I'm just curious, just hearing that you're going to be the new chair of the Human Rights Commission. I'm just curious if you see that if this were to go through, that you would try and work together to some degree with that, with the Human Rights Commission and this new um, board have any relationship together? Well, um, I guess the, the dream piece would be that not only would the Human Rights Commission, but all of the commissions that are dealing with protected classes. Um, but to look at that racism, systemic racism component initially, uh, looking to work with the AG's division of civil rights, you know, as well as this new civil rights officer would be, you know, a goal, you know, one of the goals of the commission. And, you know, as we move forward. Other questions for coach? Not at the moment. Would you be available to us also? Should sure, sure. I'd be happy. I'd be happy to. Further? Great. Thank you very much. And and thank you very much because this this isn't easy. You know, I mean, stuff that tugs on our hearts. You know, and you know, kind of get into places in there that uh, are kind of gushy, for lack of a better adjective. <laughs> you know, it, uh, it isn't easy. But I think the fact that we're taking this opportunity to work on it you know, says a lot about Vermont. You know, and that's what makes it special. Sorry. You just woke up. Um, <laughs> No, you were lying in wait. <laughs> <laughs> Have other states set up what we're talking about here? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Which is, you know, just sometimes it's helpful to look how <coughs> someone structure something uh, and who does it report to, how is it funded, uh, what have the results been, um, you know, has it made a difference, and, and that would be really uh, interesting to know but um. well, well I, I guess it's it's something that you know we could always you know do a little work with you know NCSL or uh, mm -hmm. you know one of those entities at least mm -hmm. you know make an inquiry to see you know we're in the process of um, right. developing our you know our work and what do you have right you know available yeah good point so thank you great thank you you're welcome. Fred, I don't know that we have time to do a full walkthrough, but uh, at all. Okay. <laughs> uh, nine well, pages. But sounds like you got a little bit of a walkthrough already yeah. from the and If you would mm -hmm. mind, uh, I wanted to, two questions I wanted to ask before sure. we need to go downstairs. Um, one, do you have any? Uh, flexibility later today to come and do an honest to God walk through with us. Yes, um, I'm I'm booked in committee. I think from two to four thirty, but outside of that. Oh, I, I'm thinking much before because I gather the floor for the house is also going to be very short today, and I think we're all be go going to go directly into caucuses. Yes. Um, which opens up right after lunch. For, for committee discussion type stuff if we didn't have people come up. So would say um, if if this transpires as such, <coughs> would say 115 be possible sure. for you mm -hmm. to do a full walkthrough with yep. us? 
committee, does that seem reasonable if indeed this plays out the way I've been given to understand? It, it might, you know, nothing's ever for sure until it happens <laughs> around here, right? Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so we'll, we'll try for 115 for an honest-to-goodness walkthrough. Okay. The, the other thing I wanted to ask right now, so it could, at least in my mind, chew on this. This business about, it's on page, come, 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 come. page, it's right at the beginning of section three, thereabouts. Dag, oh, here it is. This business about the chief civil rights officer. So when there's talk about it being independent, it's true. Is it truly meant to be entirely independent of everything out there? It's like a free-floating atom or something. <laughs> <laughs> the language in the bill does suggest that it's intended to be independent of the governor's cabinet. So independent, although it's housed within the executive branch, it is intended to operate independently of it. Yes. And that all the departments and agencies uh, are basically told in this language, you will cooperate, basically. Yes. In just informal. Language. Yes, yes. Okay. I, I just wanted that clear in my own mind. Okie dokie. Um, folks, any short questions for Bryn? Understanding 115, we'll do a formal walk Warren? I just wondered if um, one of the last questions to coach was you're aware of things in other states, and I just wondered as you were looking at it, yeah. did you, it, I assume that other states have faced this question. In yes. Different ways. Yes. So I am not aware of any other states that have instituted something similar, but I am aware of some initiatives to um, put something similar into place. So I can work with NCSL to to find out if there are some samples that we can look at um, of other legislation. That would be great. Yeah. Jim. So when you say initiatives. Um, I guess ours would be an initiative because we're actively looking yes. at it but haven't enacted anything. So other states have s perhaps something similar going through? I, that is what I'm not sure of, but I will okay. work with CSL to find out how far along the process have other states gone. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. That would be helpful. We all set till 1.15? Assuming things unfold as predicted. If not, watch for notes from me or stand up on the floor and say something off the cuff. <laughs> okay. 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 What will work? What will work? All right. And then, th thank you, Greg. Thank you. Till later. Okay. Till later. So at 1.15, here's my plan for the moment, subject to po potential change. At 1.15, get things squared away in our heads as to what the bill actually says with Bryn. And then after... Uh, Bryn finishes, and, and we finish with our questions for Bryn. If we could then have some uh, committee discussion time before 2.30 arrives regarding uh, the Waterbury Charter, okay? Because at 2.30, we have to move into formal discussion of the uh, Charter again, understanding that anybody and everybody is welcome to sit in the room and listen to said discussions, okay? All righty. Uh, down on the floor in five minutes. Interesting. Man. Welcome back to having most of the seats filled, Ryan. <laughs>